Okay, welcome back. In the last video, we were talking about simple arithmetic operators like 9 times 8. Um, and that would just simply print the answer 72 on the screen. So what we want to talk about now is using variables because say we had a problem like, well, um, maybe 5 plus x is equal to 8 or something, right? Now we can do this in... We can do this in C++, um, so you know we know by looking at this that x would have to be 3, right? So we can go here, and what we want to do is we want to define a variable. And again, we're still using integer variables, or integer numbers. We're not looking at anything like real numbers or things, you know, fractional points or anything like that. I guess that is a real number. <laughs> um, but So what we're doing here is we want to define an integer variable. And to do that, we write int. Okay, so this is very similar to uh, what we were talking about um, with our functions here. So, but we're talking about variables now. So we're inside the main body of the function, and we're going here. So we want to say int x, you know, to keep it simple because we're going to say five plus x, and then we have to assign something to it. So what we're doing is we're assigning a value or we're storing a value in x. So we're saying that x, well. You know, in this case, we want x to be 3, right? So we can do that and then end the statement. Okay, and then it just bumps out to keep it looking nice. All right, so this is a little bit different than the traditional equal sign in math. In C++, we call this the assignment operator. And what that basically means is um, our C++ program is just finding a space in our memory, like somewhere like a physical place in our memory, and it's assigning that little space you know, as to where x is going to be. And then we're going to put something there. So we're going to store the number 3 in there. So every time we call, you know, this variable x, um, our compiler is going to go find it and say, yeah, okay, it's in this place on the hard disk or whatever, or in the memory, and uh, and then it's just going to use it. So in that sense, we can, you know, say we had 3, we could put a 7 in there or something, and now it's 7. Okay, but for now, I just want to say it's 3, just to keep it simple. All right, so then what we can do here is, instead of writing 9 times 8, um, you know, we wanted to write 5 plus x, so we can just simply go like this, 5 plus x. All right, now let's see this and uh, let's see what happens. So we go and run this and it's going a little slow. There we go. So it equals 8. Perfect. So, you know, I hope that makes sense. Um, for example, if we changed, um, you know, maybe if we change this to a 4 or something, when we run this, you're going to see that you know, now we're going to get 9. Okay, simple enough. So remember, uh, what we're doing is we're just assigning, you know, or storing variables, or storing numbers, sorry, in these variables. So let's say maybe we want to do something else. Maybe we want to do, say, y plus x is equal to 8. Well, what we can do is we can define another, uh, we can define another variable and say int y is equal to, well, let's say 5. Okay, and instead of this 5 here, we could say maybe y plus x. And let's go and run this and see what happens. So look, we're getting 8 again still. So that's perfect. Um, now the other thing to mention here is we don't have to write, um, once we define it, this is the definition here, but when we just uh, when we use it anywhere else, we don't want to write something like this, int y plus int x. In fact, actually, that's just going to confuse your compiler, and uh, it's just not going to work out for you. <laughs> so there we go. Um, now the next thing we could do, I guess, is let's make one more variable. Let's say we don't know, you know, we don't know this is going to be eight or something. And well, let's say this is, you know, we could say it's maybe equal to z, or let's say answer. So for the names of variables, these are names y, x, and answer. Um, and so there's some rules for naming them. Um, they can start with a letter or an underscore, and then anywhere else, you know, within it, at the end or at the middle, you can have an underscore or a number or any letter. You know, that's case sensitive, so just make sure, um, you know, um, here we go, like answer is not the same as answer with a capital A. So there we go. Oh, another thing is don't include um, symbols like that. Oops, that's just numbers. Um, you know, any of these shift things. It's just going to mess up and give you a bunch of errors. So just stick to numbers and letters and make sure you're not starting with a number. So let's go here and write our next in our next variable. Let's say integer answer. And let's put in um, what we want to do is let's say we're going to initialize this with let's say x plus y. Okay, cool. So and then what we want to do instead of doing this, well we can see out our answer and then just see what happens. So here we go. And hey, look at that. It's 8. And, you know, just to double check that that's not just saying 8 over and over again. Um, whoops. Um, here we go. 
this will work for us, you know, uh, just to make sure that this is actually working. See, now it says 10, so that's perfect. Okay, so now I guess something else we can do is we can overwrite um, we can overwrite the values in this. Like I said, right, I could just change this to 3 if I want or, you know, change it to 5, whatever, and then each time I do that, it'll, you know, it'll update and it's knowing what's going on. But let's say we want to add 5 plus 5 in our answer, and then we want to change these numbers. So then we want to say, like, well, now we've done that, we've printed 10 on the screen, but we want to change this to maybe 3 and, uh, let's say, let's say integer y is one or something like that, right? And then what we want to do, so we want to print, we want to print 10 and then we want to print four. So we would say C out, um, answer, and then end line. All right, so what we're expecting this to do, as far as we know, is just gonna print a 10 and then it's gonna print a four. So if we go and run this, well, here we're getting an error already. It says, Ready declaration of integer x. So remember I said before, we don't want to write int again, right? So right away, we can take that out. So hopefully you see why that is. You know, we didn't say int x here and int y. So there we go. So now, you know, we'll try again. We'll see if this works again, because we want it to print 10 and then 4 on the screen. But look at this. It's printing 10 and then 10. So that's, you know, as far as we're concerned, that's not what we want it to do. So let's look at why that happened. Um, so here we declared, you know, we initialized x with 5 and y with 5, and then we initialized answer with x plus y. So at this point, the compiler's read all this stuff, and it says, okay, yeah, that's 5 plus 5, so answer's going to be 10. And then we print 10 to the screen. So that's what it has stored in it, you know. Uh, as far as this point, it hasn't seen the 3 and the 1 below it yet. So then it's going to come down, it's done all that stuff, and it'll say, okay, well now... You know, now x has a 3 stored in there and y has a 1. That's totally okay. Um, but I'm going to see out answer. But, you know, answer hasn't recognized because last time we, you know, we, when we initialized answer, x was 5 and y was 5. So it's printing 10. So that's why it's printing 10 down here again. So if we want it to not print 10, what we have to do is we have to just, you know, put a store a new thing in answer. So we would say answer. Um, we're going to assign just again, in this case, x plus y. So now when it comes down, it says, well, the last time I saw x, now it was a 3, and the last time I saw y was a 1, so this should work. So let's go run that, and I spelled answer wrong. So there we go, uh, and there we need that too. So let's try that again. And here we go. So look at that, it prints 10 and then 4. So that's exactly what we want it to do. Now the last thing I'll say about uh, about um, this assignment operator here is remember I said that it's not like an equal sign in x, right? So or not like an equal sign in math. So if we had here like say maybe integer x is equal to five, or assign you know we're assigning five into integer x. Well, what we can do then is we can say well x you know, is equal to x plus one, and then we'll go and see out x, and then just end that line. So what it's doing here, it says, okay, I'm putting a 5 in x. Cool, now x is 5. And then it's coming down here and says, well, I'm going to put all this stuff here in x again. So right now, x is 5, and we're still going to have 5 plus 1, and we're going to store all that in x. So we can go and build and run this, and we should be getting a 6. Perfect. All right, um, the other thing we can do, maybe we had, um, we had in x, we could say we have int y is equal to x something like that, put a semicolon, and then we could see out y. And so we can store other variables, you know, in, in variables. So here we go. There we go. So, you know, it's printing y, but we've only assigned, you know, this 5 into x and then the x into y. So it's kind of a chain of events that happens to make that work. Yeah, so that's pretty much sums it up. Um, uh, for now, at least, let's say, and just to kind of hit this home, you know, in math, um, if we said x is equal to x plus one, for example, like we just did up there. Um, in math, this is not true. There's no way, like if we had five, cannot equal five plus one. But that's why this isn't an equal sign in C++. We're assigning five plus one, you know, into this variable. So just kind of takes a little while to wrap your head around it, but hopefully that stuff kind of starts making sense.